Welcome back to Advertising Champions on Daily Ad Brief. I'm your host, Mike White, and on Advertising Champions, we meet with experts in the industry to talk about the tips, tricks, trends, and the technologies they utilize to help their clients grow their campaigns and their businesses. Join us today, we have Itamar from Umbrella Micro Enterprises and Jason from Axia Public Relations. Welcome to the program. Hey Mike, happy to be here. Good yeah, morning, Glad to good be here, morning. thanks for the invite. Thank you guys for coming. So Itamar, tell me a little bit about Umbrella Micro Enterprises and what your business does. So uh, we are a platform via which small marketing uh, agencies resell third-party marketing solutions to small businesses who are their clients. And Jason, uh, tell me about Axia Public Relations and the services you provide your customers. Yeah, Mike, uh, we're a PR agency working with national brands. Uh, we were just named one of Forbes' top PR agencies in America, so we're just trying to fill those big shoes. So as you guys start your company, there are two different approaches. One's, um, Itamar, your company is more of a SaaS company, and Jason, you've got a service-oriented company. So talking about the biggest changes, and we'll start with you, Itamar, what's the biggest changes to the way you've had to market your company to attract customers over the past year? For us as a technology company, um, there were always uh, two ways to market. One is um, advertising, sophisticated marketing, uh, advertising funnels, mainly Facebook advertising, going through qualification funnels, booking appointments into SDRs and sales reps. And the other is um, the dream 100 tactic, right? Uh, go to where uh, a lot of clients are, uh, sources of influence and uh, talk there or be on a podcast or on a webinar where you have a relevant audience, uh, which I think is more extended into the PR realm. And Jason, so on the public relations side, and you've represented for, uh, you've been around for 20 plus years, worked with hundreds of brands on national level. Uh, how are businesses finding out about you uh, really in the past year as COVID's been around? Sure. So as NMR said, you know, uh, earned media is certainly a way that we attract clients to our brand through us being out there and getting earned media. Also with us speaking at conferences and things like that. And certainly uh, because we're producing some thought leadership expert uh, content sharing topic tips and trends related to the PR industry, we're definitely getting a lot of inbound leads and uh, from uh, that content that we put out there and the speaking engagements and the appearances we have. So uh, that seems to be what's really working well for us. Um, and uh, the nice thing is we don't have to do any cold outreach or anything like that. Leads are just coming to us based on our strong brand and rep great reputation. So conferences are important, and obviously there was a lull in people actually showing up in person. Um, there's many organizations with like-minded people at it. Um, I know, Jason, um, you and I were both part of or are part of the AMI with Drew McClellan. Um, what are some of those organizations that have been most successful to you to get in front of their audiences over the past uh, really five years? And Jason, starting with you. Oh, over the last five years, things have changed a lot, like you described. So I would say um, just being out in front of our target audience, which is mostly national brands. So attending some conferences, although most of the conferences that I'm going to are more uh, agency management institute and kind of for agencies. So there's not a lot of clients presence there. Um, but certainly just speaking and keynoting about PR to different target industries that we want to be in front of and getting in front of those decision makers and influencers uh, within the industry has been very valuable for us. Uh, also, just kind of, you know, amplifying the content that we're creating and the content we're sharing has been very valuable as well. And Amar, uh, any organizations that you're a part of that uh, have provided you value? So we're part of Localogy, used to be uh, L uh, LSA. Uh, it provides a lot of value in terms of uh, potential partners, uh, channel partners, also vendors. But actually one of the major transformations that we experienced in, since COVID is uh, doing many more podcasts, many more webinars, hosting our own podcast. And that's actually extremely effective, uh, very effective uh, for us, even though face-to-face -face, uh, still bits any type of uh, a virtual meeting uh, option. I think uh, podcasting and webinars where you're invited to talk with large communities are extremely effective. So, Itamar, the current customer base, who are three to four industries that you look for that could utilize your platform? 
So for us, it's uh, more intent-based. Uh, if you are currently a marketing freelancer or a small marketing agency and you want to expand your agency by having more excellent products to sell, better margins, having Legion done for you and branding, then you are looking for a solution like us. But you, we also see a lot of people coming from the gig economy, uh, people that might have worked in corporate and marketing and sales, lost their job people that are uh, looking to start a business coming to us. So we see both uh, both of the intent based and uh, if it's niche based, then it's obviously from the marketing niche. So the customers that come in, you're providing them really a back office as a, to resell services to their customer base. Is that correct? Yeah. So we partner with big brands uh, that usually don't work with small agencies. They're looking for uh, major commitments that a small agency just won't do. And we kind of bulk buy on behalf of a lot of brands, whether it's SaaS products or marketing services, we integrate them into our platform and allow them to resell excellent services from excellent vendors for margins they would never be able to get from themselves, 60 to 70% profit margins usually. And that's that's kind of the core that we started with and expanded into providing them branding and leads as well. So, Jason, a company that is a tech-based company like Itamars, um, how can bringing in a PR firm benefit his company and what kind of services um, or deliverables would you provide to a company like his? You know, he mentioned earlier how earned media and appearances and the news and, and, uh, and webinars and podcasts have been very helpful for him to attract business. So I would start there and see what he's done before, uh, what other kind of uh, micro niches could we identify or even macro niches and what other industries are tangential to the ones he's speaking to that might be beneficial to get them interested in his services as well. So kind of a fresh third party independent perspective of what he's already doing and then come in and kind of amplify those existing efforts. But, you know, I loved it when he said that, you know, he's seeing a big increase in his business from earned media and getting quoted, cited, interviewed, um, and appearing on podcasts and webinars, kind of our bread and butter, what we do. Um, we've got other services as well, but, you know, since he's already doing that and it's working well, I would try to figure out how to do more of that. And Jason, where's the crossover between earned media and digital media, the paid and the earned part. Are you seeing more of a crossover um, as things progress or are they still standalone services? Yeah, that's a great question. So we're obviously keeping an eye on that as a lot of news outlets have started requiring uh, some content to appear as paid or sponsored uh, or basically advertising or advertorial content. And certainly the journalist in, my, in me doesn't really like that. I think there you know, should be some further clarity between the two uh, different ways of approaching it. But for the most part, we're not involved in earned media, excuse me, paid media. We're focused on earned media. We're focused on social media and web content. Uh, but occasionally we will use paid media to amplify existing content on behalf of our clients. Or if there's a section or an audience or an opportunity they really want to be in, then we can explore what it would cost to pay or sponsor for that content. Uh, but that's usually in, in our mind kind of a last resort or an option that we will reserve until we've exhausted all the other opportunities. And uh, looking at how everyone had to, and I really don't like the word, but pivot during COVID. Um, what is something that you learned from the experience where you were running a certain way? Um, starting with you, Edomar, is there anything that you learned during COVID that you changed the way that um, you operate your company? So we were, uh, I think, 90% uh, remote already, uh, and COVID turned it into 100% remote. I think what uh, COVID uh, really did is showed me how important it is to actually be with people. <laughs> it was actually the other way around. Um, I think, uh, I think the, having 10% together or 20% together is really important. Having 100% remote, having everybody at home, uh, I don't think that is as effective. And I think that, uh, that, that, that was kind of a really, really focused uh, my, my perception of that. Jason, how'd you pivot and uh, what'd you learn from the experience? Yeah, so similarly, we were 80% uh, remote 80% of the time, and uh, we went to 100% remote 100% of the time. We've really never looked back. I mean, we had a system and tools in place to encourage people to be able to work remote because we've always gone after the best talent we can find no matter where they live and work. Um, and so that's always been a competitive advantage for us. And one reason why we went 63 months without any turnover 
but the truth is uh, our pivot or what I call improvise, uh, we improvised during the pandemic. You know, initially there was some initial shock where clients were starting to look more closely at their budgets, but yet at the same time asking us to do more work than they've ever asked us to do before. Um, and so we kind of survived that phase. And the next thing we knew, demand for our services was at an all-time high coming out of the pandemic and the economic recovery thereafter. So our pivot was to basically uh, improvise what we're charging our, our clients. And we ultimately did across the board price increases for any new clients coming in. And that really helped us kind of filter and screen the leads that were coming in that weren't quite a good fit for us anyway. And, uh, you know, candidly, we've had our best couple years ever in company history and we're continuing uh, to chart in a meteorological growth kind of trajectory. And of course, like everybody else, having staff has been a challenge, but I use that as a reason to push back on clients when they come to us with too small of a budget. And I just said, we just don't have the bandwidth or the team or the ability to recruit more people to do this work at a lower price. So we've just been asking for a higher price. We've been getting it and our client satisfaction, employee satisfaction rate is at an all time high. So something's working. I'm not sure what it is and how long it'll last, but we're just thrilled to be here. And hey, Amar, Jason, thank you for coming on and sharing your insights with the audience, and congratulations on being advertising champions. Thank you, Thank Mike. you. I feel like I should flex. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> to find out, Thank you, guys. To find out more about Umbrella Micro Enterprises and Axia Public Relations, visit us at dailyadbrief.com. We'll see you next time on Advertising Champions. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.